Hi, I'm Hollis Roberts. I'm a program manager here at Magic, and I had the pleasure of listening to Sophia's final presentation. Great job. Um, I have Sophia and Namrata here today. Uh, Sophia, will you introduce yourself? Hi, my name is Sophia. I'm a senior in high school at the School for Advanced Studies, Wilson Campus in Miami, Florida. Um, my family is from Argentina, and I just love science and history. And Namrata, introduce yourself. Hi, this is Namrita. Uh, I'm here at Cincinnati as a postdoctoral fellow in Cincinnati Children's Hospital Medical Center. Sophia, tell us about your project. So I wrote a blog article about the usage of nanomaterials in historical conservation. So basically the different types of nanomaterials that are used in different materials that are used within artifacts themselves and what properties those nanomaterials have that are beneficial for their use in conservation. Such a great project. Uh, what drew you to do a project on this subject matter? Well, I had a bit of a background in nanomaterials. Um, I do an, I do research at the University of Miami that involves carbon dots, which are just carbon nanoparticles. And I've always really loved history. And right before starting this program, I visited a local museum. That's kind of like a very big mansion that some philanthropists a hundred years ago bought and bought art from all over, you know, Renaissance Europe. And unfortunately, a lot of those artifacts were in poor condition, especially based on, you know, Miami's humidity and the salt content in the water. It was right on the coast. And what really struck me was that there was a 1600s painting that was kind of split in half, um, kind of decaying. I saw a little mold on there and would, that kind of upset me. And me and Namrata had already spoken about possibly researching about something about nanoparticles, but within the medical field. So I thought, you know, why not apply that to historical conservation? Really impressive. And Namrata, what was your favorite uh, parts of working with Sophia? Uh, being a science major, like, you know, I'm biased towards science, but when I knew the proper amalgamation of science and history, and I did do a little bit of nanoparticle in my undergrad, but that was again for the medical purposes. She opened the entire new horizon for me. So I learned with her during the process. She taught me a lot. That's so neat. So you both uh, gained new skills and uh, so knowledge from this experience. How cool. And Sophia, what was your favorite part of working with your mentor, Namrata? Namrata was just a wealth of knowledge. She was just, she knew so much about everything. She was such a guiding hand within my project. Um, she provided such unique perspectives that I wouldn't have considered, such as taking into account um, environmental preservation. So, you know, prevention of anything being deteriorated is as important as stopping that deterioration. Wow, oh, that's really neat. Are there skills you feel like you gained throughout this experience? I really learned to navigate my way through reading through scholarly journals and scientific articles. A lot of those can be very jargon filled and I managed to, you know, follow through that and um, kind of maneuver my way through um, understanding everything by doing a little more supplemental research. So everything ran smoothly. Hmm. And Amrata, what is one of the top strengths you noticed in Sophia? Uh, I have actually quite a few. I'll highlight two of those. She is like, she can take up any challenges. She is ready to learn anything and she will put that work into it. And she's somebody who to me, like being at such a young age when I was talking to her, she's already advocating for women in science. Those two things are very rare in like she's a teenager pretty much. So in that age group, I, I'm not being ageist or something, but that much of maturity at that level, it's like kudos to her. I was not that mature at that age. Oh, that's what the high compliments. Um, is there anything, Sophia, that surprised you throughout the project or during your time at Magic? Um. Well, with regards to what I researched, I really didn't know much about nanoparticles. Um, I didn't know that the shapes, for example, what they were could kind of uh, determine the properties that they had. So um, for example, gold is very antimicrobial and I had no idea that that was a thing. And um, within magic, you know, I really wasn't very much aware about 
um, how little women are involved in STEM. You know, there's this whole big trend online of, you know, women in STEM, but that's only a very small percentage of women within the workforce. So um, it was nice to be a part of that growing community. I want to add something, Holly, as you just uh, mentioned, and as Sophia mentioned about women in STEM. And if you remember our last blog, Women and Microaggression, so it's only 30%. So yes, that, like still people are like, we have come this far, but that is not quite in stats. That is not quite evident in statistics. So that was, that's still we need to push further down. Absolutely, absolutely. That tees me up perfectly for my next question here. I'm going to ask one final question to each of you. Uh, Sophia, if a, a student was interested in joining MAGIC, what would you tell them? Of course, yes. <laughs> no, I have no doubts that they would enjoy what this program has to offer. Great. And how about you, Namrata? What would you tell a mentor who is interested in possibly um, mentoring a student? Definitely. Like, if you remember, we have Sukhvir. I have another two of my friends who saw some of this presentation. Actually, she read Sophia's article and she was like, hey, I'm also interested in uh, magic. So I was like, sure. Oh, how fantastic. Well, congratulations to both of you. You did a phenomenal job. Your presentation, your blog article are fantastic. And I can't wait to see what you do next. And um, welcome to Magic Alumni Group. Thank, Thank you. you.